We're off the back of a couple of decent away results, really, um, ending with the pretty fantastic 4-1 win at Peter on, Peterborough on Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. A couple of, definitely a couple of decent performances. Obviously, the I thought we played really well at Curzon on Saturday, and it was a right kick in the teeth to concede that goal right at the death. Of, I thought we put in a really good performance up there, and on another day would have won the day, would have won the game comfortably. And then um, didn't go to Peterborough. I endured the stream, which surprisingly was quite relaxing in the end for the last five to ten minutes, which is most unusual. And it was a really good stream as well, to be fair. Um, but no, I thought it was a really good professional performance at Peterborough. Got the goals that we'd kind of deserved at Curzon, and and again six points from three away games was was an excellent haul, really. And I'm you know I'm really pleased for the players and. Our, our away form has certainly sort of turned around, if you like, in terms of where it was when people were talking about it November time. It's certainly looking much more rosy now. And I think for pretty much three weeks on the on the trot, results have gone our way as well, which is always an added bonus, isn't it? So the, the league table is looking very nice at the moment. Yeah, I don't think we're supposed to talk about it, are we, the league table and stuff. We'll be getting our, our wrists slapped, won't we? But yeah, no, you can't help but look at it, can you? When you kind of find yourself probably a little bit surprised to all our surprise competing right in amongst the playoff race. So, yeah, no, really, really good. And I desperately try not to get my phone out during the course of our 90 minutes, but it's not always easy, is it, in fairness? But yeah, I think we've just got to keep plugging away, haven't we? Just keep going. We've obviously got three pretty important games over the course of the next week or so with um, Chorley at home and then Alfreton at home, followed by Brackley away. So we'll just go in, hopefully go in with the same application and the same motivation that we've approached the three away games. Um, and, and you never know where we might end up. And credit to um, Paul and the players. You know, we, we're in a position now with with the fixtures that we got, with the teams that we've got left to play, that it's kind of all in our own hands, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly right. I know Paul said that in his post-match interview on Tuesday night, didn't he? So, so yeah, well, you know, we've 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 put ourselves in a decent position to have a little bit of a go at it, and you know, I'm I'm absolutely delighted for everybody. I think as supporters, we're probably, you know, potentially due a more exciting end to the season than we've had in recent times, and I'm I'm really, I'm just really pleased for Paul, the staff, and the players because actually, I think the effort they've put in this year. Uh, and the application they've shown and the way they've embraced playing for our football club, they kind of deserve to have a chance and have a little go at it and must pay a little bit of credit to Paul because he he has been really, really ill for probably the best part of two weeks. Um, I didn't sort of couldn't get to train in the week, not the week, just gone the week before ahead of the Curzon game and he's been really poorly and he's sort of battled on and got himself through it. So, you know, full full credit to him. Maybe the players have enjoyed a bit of peace, maybe, I don't know, but he's certainly, he, he certainly dragged himself out of his death, deathbed for Curzon on Saturday and I think he, he was improving, he said, when he was at Peterborough and hopefully he'll continue to continue to get better. Just talking about the support because I didn't go to Curzon myself, but looking at the photos, there was a a great kind of travelling numbers and and Peterborough as well. I didn't realise for the first five or ten minutes um, at Peterborough it was hell of a fan behind both goals and and pretty much surrounding us in the seats as well. So it, some some great turnouts. Yeah, I mean the support has been brilliant home and away this year. And kind of we're obviously going to have to go into some slightly disappointing news about away ticket allocations in a little while. But yeah, the support away from home has been. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, I think we probably outnumbered the Kirsten fans on Saturday, and I think it was much the same at Peterborough. And it's those aren't the first occasions that's happened this year. So, yeah, no, it's been, yeah, it's, it's sort of run out of things to say about them, don't you, in fairness? But, you know, it's just a thank you from everybody at the club. You know, the support's brilliant. The noise levels have been absolutely brilliant as well. You know, good times and bad times. So, yeah, th thank you to everybody once again. Please keep it up. You know, we have got some, we have got nine pretty big games ahead of us so that's that's if it if it is possible let's keep on let's let's make it even noisier and even louder so yeah fingers crossed well we'll we'll talk straight away about the boundary tickets that you allude to obviously um we got 400 tickets which which gives us a headache because we could probably take 800 or or a thousand if results continue to go our way between now and then um so we have to put our thinking caps on really didn't we in terms of how we can try and um as fairly as possible, give give fans a chance to get their hands on those on those very limited tickets. Yeah, you know, in many ways, it's a football club's worst nightmare, really, to have an allocation that you know isn't going to satisfy the demand. Yeah, you're right. We would take eight hundred to a thousand Banbury comfortably. You know, we could that, and and I suspect 
I suspect Banbury would would love to have 800 to 1,000 Hereford fans there on the day for whatever reason. They're not being able to do that. And there's no criticism of, of Banbury from us as a football club. That's They can only work within the parameters and guidelines they've got. Um, and it is disappointing. You know, we, we, we had in-depth discussions yesterday about the best way to do it. And, and in the end, you, you know, and, and you've got a lot of expertise and knowledge of this type of thing jay having worked in at the club for such a long time and in the end we kind of felt that the, the the only real option we had was to go down the season ticket route and do a ballot you know when you buy a season ticket part of the incentive is that in circumstances like this you have the best possible chance of getting a ticket so we have to go with that we aren't yet like a Premier League club where we dish out points for the number of away games that fans travel and you look at it now and you think well, never imagine ever having to think that might be something we should do, but that probably would be the only way we could have dealt done this. But then you need all the information about all the fans that are travelling on all the different buses. And we're fortunate that we've got several different sort of people who take buses to games and that sort of stuff. So it's all been really complicated. Um, but I, just, I think I just it, butt in about the buses because obviously a lot of people say about the buses, which you know, there's a lot of very committed supporters that travel on the buses, but there's also a lot of very committed supporters who travel independently. And they're the ones that we need to be fair to. So if they're going week in, week out to away games, we, we don't necessarily know. We've got to be fair to everyone. And I think that's kind of the point for, with, with the ballot or however we we could have done it is we wanted to be fair to everyone. And I, I know this, it really doesn't help everyone. But it was the fairest thing that we kind of could come up with, with the resource and um, kind of the the ticket system that we had. You know, we have, we don't have the luxury of a Premier League ticket system that that logs all those details. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, and we're, not, and we're not and we're not and we're not favouring any. No. season ticket holders all season ticket holders wherever you are in the ground will who who want to apply for tickets will go into the ballot we're not we're not favoring any areas of the ground and that you know and that is the right thing to do i think i think i wanted to i saw one or two people saying why are you giving why are you offering two tickets per season yeah. ticket potentially um but we just think actually if you offered one per season ticket you could have families completely split up if you only offer one at least if you offer two per season ticket if you've got, you yeah. know, a parent and child who go and that sort of stuff, then you you've got the possibility of getting them two rather than at least you're not yeah. splitting everyone up. You'll get you can at least get a two. Yeah, during COVID, obviously when we got to the Vars uh, the trophy final in COVID, and and people were limited to one ticket, and there were hardly any kids at the at the trophy final because they just obviously couldn't go on their own. They they struggled to get a ticket, um, or or the parent couldn't go with them. So that's kind of the the going from experience we we want as many families as as possible and kids as possible to go as well so we we you know we're, we're literally trying to be as fair right across the board uh, in terms of i've seen a few comments saying the club are going to select people out of the ballot i can honestly put my hand on heart and say when we do the ballot it we won't even see the supporters names everyone is going to be given a unique number that number will be drawn at random we won't see the names until the draw has been taken taken place. So we're not going to go and cherry pick anyone. We are just putting numbers in a hat and and drawing at random. And I know the people who go every away game and have been fantastic this season. I know some of them unfortunately might miss out. Um, but by allowing two people, uh, one person to have two tickets, I'm I'm sure you know most people know a season ticket holder as a friend. So hopefully that might give those those people a chance to to get their hands on the ticket as well yeah it's been, a, it's, a, it's been a real headache i have to say yeah you know and i i think whatever system we put in place it wouldn't have suited everyone but you know yeah. i've had a sleepless night over it and and hopefully we've kind of come up with a fair way of doing it yeah and i think jay that's the that the, for me that's the key point and what i'd say to supporters you know even those that are unhappy and you know don't necessarily want to hear our reasoning um, we do get it. We know it's disappointing. As soon as we knew our allocation, we were like, this is going to be painful. But we have to make decisions at the end of the day. We have to do every decision we make, as we've always said, is, you know, what we think is right for the club and right for supporters. And 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 that's what's happened in this case. You know, that, you know, we could have tried different things, but actually we think this is the tried and trusted kind of method of doing things. And actually, yeah. 
as I said, as we said at the start, really, when you buy a season ticket and commit to a season ticket, your expectation is you will be given the best possible chance of getting a ticket in circumstances like this. And, and, and that's what we've gone with. So, yeah, we, we completely get it. We know people are going to be unhappy and we know, you know, if you like, we know there are going to be fans who deserve a ticket who maybe yeah. won't get one. But actually, you know, there's not a whole lot different we can do. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable that we've done what we've you know, we've thought about it in detail and done what we think is the right thing. And that's, I think that's all all we can do on behalf of supporters. Yeah, I know you mentioned about Banbury, you, you know, um, if, if they could give us more, I think they would. I know the conversations myself and Nick, um, Marshall Secretary, have had with Banbury. You know, we went, we initially went back and said, look, we, we think we could take double what you're allocating us. And, and to be fair to Banbury, they went away and I think they tried to to work out if they could fit more in and and I think it came back that they couldn't so you know there's I, I th- honestly think if, if Banbury could take more they they would allow us more and uh, honestly think that they're just kind of not in the position to do that yeah absolutely and we don't you know like I said we're not looking we're not looking to pick a fight with anybody here we completely no. we you know we we have our own we have our own you know things that we have to deal with at our end we're just you know we've just got a more sizable ground and more used to dealing with the bigger crowds kind of things so it, it is you know it's one of my favorite terms isn't it it is what it is as a club we've done what we think is the best for our supporters and and you know sorry to those who who don't get lucky but really there isn't a whole lot more i think we can do about it uh if we go on to another topic that's probably caused a, a quite a bit a little bit of debate lately it's it's the uh, the votes for the kit for the away kit um obviously um not everyone's loved all the kits, which is which is understandable. I think there's there's certain kits that um, people that, that plenty of people like, uh, but we've we've had a a few neg well more than a few negative comments on social media about the the choices, and I know we just wanted to talk through kind of how we got to those choices and why we got to those choices, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you're the you're the king of fashion Easter. Clearly, <laughs> clearly, Jamie, looking at you and seeing yeah. you on a match day, but yeah, again. Kits are subjective, aren't they? Everybody's got a view. Everybody likes some like, some dislike. I know we've had a lot of votes in the a lot of votes in the poll, which is fantastic. So it's whether people have liked it or not like it. We well past two thousand votes, I think, aren't we, in terms of the various types of kit and that. But I mean, you're quite heavily involved in the commercial element of it, and obviously been involved in the processing before. And I'm not looking to chuck you under a bus, clearly, but you can kind of just give an insight into yeah. how the how the process. And you, you know, you, at the end of the day, you deal more closely with the suppliers than than I would. Yeah. So it's in how it go, really. So you know, we 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 asked Tapper to prov- to provide us with three kits so that we could go to the fans and and kind of get the vote. The we the black and red kit we thought was a traditional choice. Obviously, you know, most of our away kits are red and black, um, but Hereford United have had black and red in the, in the past. I think there was one in the kind of mid to, yeah, mid 2000s, maybe, that was kind of pretty similar. Um, so we felt that that kind of ticked the traditional box. I'm quite a traditional person. I, You know, I, you ask anyone in the office and it's, for me, black, white, red, and maybe a little bit of grey and, and really nothing else. But we know from a commercial point of view that we need to mix kits up. We, in recent years, we had two black and red striped kits in not straight after each other, but maybe a couple of seasons later. And commercially, it just didn't sell because people were coming in and saying, well, I got a black and red striped kit. I don't need to buy another one. So um, in terms of the shop budget in, that we need to meet, in terms of providing as, as much resource to the playing budget, we, we need to sell um, one of our key product lines and we need a fresh look on it. So that's why we went with a pink kit, which we had about, I don't know, three, four years ago, we had a pink away kit, like a, a, it was a baby pink kind of thing, which was probably is still our best selling away kit. Um, so we, you know, we thought, well, fans like the pink one let's go give them that option again um and then the the maroon or burgundy whichever you like to call it i think it was just pretty much a wild card kind of um let's see what fans like but you know we, we wanted to give supporters the option so you know and, and as you say away kits are subjective can i just say i've not designed any of them <laughs> like my so I'm, I'm, you know, it's not, not, not me on the design, but it's not grey, is it? So. Yeah, exactly. That's what it'd be. Yeah. Um, so 
that's our thinking really behind the three kits. So, you know, I know not everyone agrees, but you know, that's and you know, that's how we got to it, the reasoning behind it. Uh we wanted, yeah, traditional, we want away kits to sell so that we can um provide as, as strong a playing budget as possible. Obviously, the home and away kit are, are, are two of our key products in the shop that, that generate um um you know a high level of sales both of the kit but it also draws people into the shop to buy other things as well so you know i i did see a few comments of why can't we just stick with a plain red one well if, if we do we just won't sell enough to to you know to help support the playing budget at the end of the day yeah I, I, to be honest you know that's a great explanation jan i hope that's helpful to people out there who've obviously had a view on it but i you know i'm a traditionalist too I don't ever envisage us moving away from playing in a white, a predominantly white home top with black shorts and what's, and we will always be traditional in terms of our home strip. But I think if you look at away kits across lots of clubs, it can sometimes be a little bit left field or a little bit yeah. different. It's often more of a fashion item rather than necessarily a, you know, a match, you know, a match wearing item. Um, and, and I think to be fair, to be fair, like you said, that pink kit, my son loved that pink kit that, you know, and he's now been passed to my daughter and she wears it. And actually, if that was our best seller in the past, it just shows that if you go a little bit braver and a little bit stronger, sometimes you can work on it. I don't want to be critical, but I don't know how many people who are talking about disliking the awake are actually people who would actually consider buying one anyway or wearing one anyway. But I think it's a there's an element. I know my son will be straight on board grabbing one of these you know, an away kit that's a bit different and a bit unusual because it's the type of thing he likes. I mean, he can't wait for the diamond match winner shirt to come out and, and when when that's coming out from match winner in a few weeks' time. So, yeah, we, we kind of get it. Like I said, it, my my opinion is everybody's it's a bit like football, isn't it? Everybody's got a view on a, on a football shirt and that sort of stuff. But I think people, you know, I, I'd like people to understand that actually your away kit is the opportunity to try and be a little bit different, to try and do something different. And as you say, if you just go down the same route every single time, you are naturally going to limit your sales opportunities. Whereas if you can find something a little bit different, um, then I think it, it, it's worth having a go at it in that side of things. So that's pretty much pretty much where it is. It'd be interesting to see which one of the shirts wins. Um, I, I, to be honest, I'd have chosen the pink one, but I've got absolutely no idea whether that's good or bad. To be honest, it's just what I liked, and I liked all. I pretty much liked all three of the kits. Um, but you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to vote or not. I don't think I have voted on this occasion, but I, I normally save my votes for Player of the Month and um, and uh -huh. Goal of the Month kind of thing. So, so there we go. But yeah, that just gives a bit of insight into how that that, that away kit selection has been. And, and you know. I would say to people, if they've got questions about it, just come to us and ask. You yeah. know what I mean? We've got no issues. Yeah. Collar us on a match day. Have a conversation yeah. with us. But, you know, if you're going to go and vent about it online, if you get the opportunity, yeah. come and speak to us. Someone, if, I was stood on the terraces at Kirsten on Saturday with the supporters. If anybody wanted to come and chew my ear about the kit selection, they were more than welcome to do so. So yeah. um, I'll always give an honest I'll always give an honest answer, whether they like the answer or not. I'll always give an honest view. So yeah. and I, know, and I know you're much the same, Jay. Yeah, I think that's a key thing. We we know, particularly with things like kit and, and the way that we do the ticket, we're not going to please everyone. We know that. We appreciate that. But we we are, you know, there's reasons why we come up with things. And, and I'm more than happy to kind of talk those reasons through. And I think we said in the past, we'll look to learn lessons from things, you know, that we do from decisions we make. And if we can do it better in the future, then we will. But, you know, I think... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk to anyone about it. And, and hopefully just us explaining our reasoning behind the, the two recent decisions. Hopefully, you know, some people might not necessarily agree still, but they might just understand where we're, we're coming from. Um, but, you know, we pretty much everything we do, we, we do have the fans at heart in, in our decision making, certainly with the tickets. It's all about fairness. Um, so, yeah, there we are. Yeah, there are there are rumours that me and you are actually fans, Jamie. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's madness, no. isn't it? Who'd have thought yeah. it? <laughs> I had to be very reserved on Tuesday night at Peterborough because we were literally sat with the away directors, and um, I'm normally quite animated. I I, re I had to sit on my hands at times. I'm, I can't do it. Then we'll, I think I'm still yeah. serving an ASBO for my celebration celebrations when Oreo scored at Chester. So I've probably got to, I don't know, I'm, well, whether, I'm well, whether I'll be welcoming Chester again after those celebrations, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? It, it was quite funny at Gloucester trying, you, trying to watch you work out how best to either get under 
around or, or over the um, the barrier in front of you so you can run down the front of everyone else. Oh, that was ridiculous. I mean, that 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 barrier leap I thought about could have ended in tears. And, and then you get yourself halfway under the barrier thinking and, and then that split second of Steer, you're the chairman. Just <laughs> just applaud. Yeah. <laughs> but there we go. Well, All good fun. I, mean, yeah. I was hoping Lovely. no one had spotted. I was hoping no one had spotted that, Jay. I don't know. Finally, if we want to just talk very briefly about the demolition, because I know there's been a few bits and pieces out in in um, in the public domain about that. So if we just want to give a very brief update on where we are with that. Yeah, I can give an update on that. We're um, continuing to talk with the councils pretty regularly. They seem to be going very well. I think we alluded to in our last call that the signs are up now sort of promoting the demolition, which is going to start sometime in May by the sounds of things, um, which which I think is pretty exciting, actually. You know, even just that that area being, you know, made flat will be in progress. We've obviously got a variety of things we need to then address as a football club in terms of, you know, we do have infrastructure and facilities down at that end. So we've got a variety of things we need to address in terms of, you know, there's a sprinkler system in there, there's groundsman's units and huts and things like that. There's obviously toilet facilities down there that we use on a match day. So we're addressing all those kind of points to make sure that we're well and truly prepped and the council understand exactly what we need when when that area is flattened. I think it's probably fair to say that we are probably going to just hold or slightly pause the floodlight um the floodlight process because we were obviously going to put new lights up on the current towers um but given that demolition is is on is sort of imminent or while the towers aren't going to go we don't think straight away we it's kind of a little bit actually if they are going to go if they are potentially going to have to be removed at some point soon why are we going to put a load of new lights up on those so we are investigating whether we can go down the route of you know the four new floodlight towers type thing um our bulb, you know, our lights aren't fabulous. We all know that, but they have passed the grading and they are OK at the moment. But it's probably just right to say that we are pausing that. It's, 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 it's a decision. It's a strategic decision from us. It's not a not a case that we had to do that. But we just think, actually, you know, while we're getting grant funding for the money, we still wouldn't want to waste grant funding money in the wrong way. Um, and yeah. so we're being completely honest with people and saying to them, listen, actually, we might be looking at going down a different route in terms of new floodlights. So. We were hoping they'd originally be installed on the new part on the current pylons in March, but that we're going to hold off on that now just while we um, work out exactly what we need to do. But we will try and progress the new floodlights situation as, as quickly as we can and and we'll do our best to keep everybody updated and still knee deep in conversations about lease extensions and that sort of stuff. And, and, and as soon as we have any news, we will let people know, you know, the council actually, we've had really good conversations with the council. They seem to understand that the club is an asset to the city and the county. Um, and, and like I said, yeah, we'll keep people updated as and when, but, you know, I feel quite excited by it. You don't want to, you know, there've been four storms before, I think, and you've, you've lived through quite a few of them, but yeah, it's, I'm quite excited by the way things are going forward and you know how quickly a development will spring up at the Blackfriars end is yet to be seen but certainly there should be progress over the summer in terms of it being tidied up and and, and flattened and, and then being a sort of prepared to be a usable space if you like. Brilliant well I think that's probably everything for now. Well apart from to say massive home game Saturday and another massive home game on Tuesday get along to the games if you can this this group of players and the staff deserve all the support they have been getting and any more support that is out there would be brilliant and then Sunday the 17th we've obviously got celebrity soccer at Edgar Street um it's an annual event that we put on so you know it should be fairly entertaining there's a couple of you know, there's at least one more big signing I think that's due to be announced at some point there's VIP tickets available to meet celebrities afterwards my kids know who the celebrities are I'm a bit oblivious to it if they were born any later than about 1976 i've got no chance but um yeah so the kids and there's obviously mascot places available as well so you know there's there's good opportunities there for people to come along to get yourself along to the celebrity soccer as well as these two these two big league matches yeah and vip tickets as well uh in the exec seating so you can just go online pick your seat in the exec seating it's vip you get access to the exec club and you'll get to meet some of the celebrities after the game as well so um, yeah, and and worth worth saying, all for three great local charities as well. Yeah, and that's the key. That's the key thing, isn't it? It's, it's supporting three fantastic local charities. You can, you know, 
just by you know, just by buying a ticket and come along to the game. You can you support the local charities or even just, you know, the greatest one in the world, just buy the ticket, even if you buy a ticket, even if you can't come and you're making your donation, which is absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, no, really important event and hopefully we'll get a good turnout. Brilliant. There we are. Thank you Excellent. very much. And I'll see you Saturday for the big one, hopefully pushing towards 3000 with a bit of luck. Yeah, that'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Top man, Jamie. Thank you. See you. Take care. Bye.